Hello, my name is Brian and today we're going to be doing a project on basement fires. If our slide is going to load, then you guys will get to see that. There we go. Cool. So, every fire is dangerous. <clears throat> every fire is dangerous, whether it be a structure fire or a wildland fire. All fires have the potential to harm those around it and the firefighters in pursuit of saving victims affected by it. Being a firefighter means being the first in the line of defense in the emergency situations and putting your life on the line in order to save others. It also means understanding proper risk assessment and size up skills. It is certainly debatable that no situation proves to be more dangerous than a basement fire. In cases of basement fires, there are many unique variabilities that can change the situation and cause many potential hazardous outcomes. In many cases, there is limited there's lots of variables and complications. In many cases, there's limited interior and exterior access to the fire, and a high potential for building slash floor collapse depending on the length of time that the fire has been burning. In every basement fire, there is the added difficulty of limited ventilation access, limited light and light visibility, limited oxygen supply, and the limited ability for size ups due to the fact that the fire is enveloped by the building that it's burning. We're gonna let this load. See if maybe come on now. There we go. Massive potential for damage. I think it skipped a slide, but that's okay. We're gonna roll with it. In seconds, a firefighter could be trapped by a collapsing stru structure, surrounded by scorching flames, or cooked by entrapped steam. There is no shortage of potential dangerous situations. Uh, caused when fighting a basement fire. It is obvious that basement fires are a special kind of obstacle to deal with, and even some of America's most historic fires were started as basement fires, such as the Great Boston of 1872 and the Great Baltimore Fire. Massive potential for damage. Great Baltimore Fire. It is evident these fires have massive potential to create death and destruction, so it is wise that firefighters master special operations and safety procedures when dealing with these fires. With great obstacles come great opportunities to overcome and to learn. It has taken us a very long time to develop specific strategic operations and create plans that are efficient and effective when dealing with when dealing with these basement fires. Credit to lots of credit to post incident and after action reports as well as fire investigation teams around the nation. Even with today's advanced technology and research, we still have to evolve and adapt our strategies and procedures due to the unpredictable nature of these situations as they are ever changing and evolving. The ability that is what we get to the Great Baltimore Fire. <laughs> the ability of basement fires to cause massive damage is represented by some of America's biggest historical fires. For example, the Great Baltimore Fire. This started as a small fire in the basement of a Hearst building and said to be discarded said to be started by a discarded cigarette. The fire ate up the building and spread to destroy more than 1,500 buildings, covering a 140-acre slash 80-block area of downtown. The fire raged for 31 hours and costed over 100 million in property damage. The Great Baltimore Fire was said to be one of the most destructive fires since, or said to be the most destructive fire since the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. It is also considered the third worst conflagration of an American city, only behind the Great Chicago Fire of 1871 and the Great San Francisco Earthquake Fire of 1906. Another example of potential disaster of these basement fires, we're going to let that load because that's going to take a little while. Another example of the potential disaster of basement fires is the Great Boston Fire of 1872. This was the largest fire recorded in the city of Boston's history, starting in a commercial warehouse basement. After engulfing the warehouse, the fire had spread to destroy 62 acres of Boston's downtown and destroyed 776 buildings, considering our and destroying most of the financial district, costing about $73.5 in damage. The aftermath left 20 dead and over 100 injured. As times have evolved, so have our practices in fighting these fires. We have learned the more effective techniques and procedures that have helped give our firefighters the upper hand in these difficult battles, and <clears throat> as well as protecting them while on the job. This is not to say that the threat of these fires has been eliminated, but to simply note the progression made by fire crews and research development teams around the nation. We're gonna have to let that load and load again too. That's what I'm thinking there. 2020, the age of amazing technology, right? There we go. Adaptation to devastation. 
Humans continue to learn and, and adapt to our dangers in our environment. Just the same, society has developed ways to ensure that people would not create more fires that had the potential to burn down entire cities, because those are not... Those are not good things. So what did people do? <clears throat> well, we first started began... We began with communicating and spreading information about the causes of these fires and creating fire awareness. And according to NFPA, by March of 1895, a small group of men representing the sprinkler and fire insurance interests gathered in Boston to discuss their inconsistencies. They knew that nine radically different standards for piping size and sprinkler spacing <clears throat> could be found within a 100-mile radius of Boston. They realized, that they realized that this nightmare for plumbers had to be resolved or the rate of sprinkler system failure might prove to be completely unacceptable. After all, after all officially coming to an agreement for a set of standards, the National Set of Fire Safety Codes, commonly known as the NFPA, uh, was created. This was one of the most efficient and effective adaptations made in the fire protection, for example, fire protection agency. For example, in 1872, during the Great Fire of Boston, there was no set of standard sprinklers for the fire safety code in a building. Having standards, in a building regu having standards on building regulations for fire safety would have not only made the buildings more safe, but have also would have provided firefighters with similar standards to, that were easier to work with during times of emergency. No matter how many safety guidelines, no matter how many safety procedures, basement fires still hold great potential to get out of hand and rapidly create problems. The true power is held in the hands of human negligence. As long as people pay attention to simple fire hazards and avoid creating these hazardous situations, people will have a better chance of avoiding basement fires. In the world today, construction is regulated to be building safer and better homes with less combustible materials. This does not eliminate the threat of fire, but simply helps reduce it. As long as hum humans use our knowledge and information gained through dealing with these crises and research, we, in the past, <clears throat> Overall, it won't matter how many times somebody has made a mistake. What changes the future is whether people are able to learn and adapt from these mistakes to create a safer environment in society. We're going to hope that that one loads. It might not. Although we have learned and adapted to these fires in emergency situations, it is good to never underestimate the potential for damage and death during these fires. The, it is Through each major disaster, people have learned how to change. What is important is adapting and learning to these situations, being able to progress in the simple process of improvement. Basement fires are not like every other structure, structural fire. They're very different and special. They bring a unique challenge. They require learning from previous encounters and in order to keep cities of tomorrow safe.